Here's a video to take you through what's involved in using data that you've got inside InfluxDB Cloud 2 within Node-RED. This simple example takes temperature data from Influx and uses it to make a decision inside Node-RED. If you already have an InfluxDB account set up, then you can skip straight to about 5 minutes 25 seconds to see how to add the InfluxDB node into Node-RED and then configure it. If you haven't already got a Cloud2 account set up, you can just sign up here with your email address and you don't need a credit card. Then you need to verify your email address and you get redirected back to a page where you can choose which cloud vendor you want to use and which cloud region you want to be set up in. And once you've done that, you choose the free tier and then you're logged in. First of all, we're going to create a new bucket. So we go to the data tool and click on buckets and then click on new bucket. We've called this one room temperature and I've set a retention policy of 24 hours. Now we're going to set up an access token for the new bucket and this will allow us to write data into Cloud2 from the client. In my case I'm using Telegraph which has been configured to listen to an MQTT topic which in turn receives temperature data from around my house. From the data screen click on tokens and then we'll generate a new read write token. I've set the scope to be just the new bucket and this means that the token we're generating can only be used to read and write to that specific bucket. And we'll give it a name and then we can copy that token to the clipboard and copy it over into our Telegraph config. I haven't actually shown the Telegraph setup here. Um, have a look on YouTube, lots of videos about how to do that. Once that's done and Telegraph is sending data into Cloud2, we can use the Data Explorer to visualize it. My data is in the MQTT consumer measurement. I can apply a filter here to only show temperature data and then filter that further to only show the Zigbee room temperature sensors which are being sent to MQTT. And when I submit this query, I can see my data on a graph. If we switch to the script editor view, then I can see the automatically generated flux query. I want to take all of those temperature readings and average them into a single number which represents the average temperature in the whole house and then I'll set up a task to run that query every 10 minutes and give me an average temperature over time. I use last to limit the data to just the most recent readings from each sensor then I group them into a single table and then I use a mean to average all of those readings into a single metric. If I run this query now all of the lines will disappear and they're replaced by a single point. It's quite hard to see a single point on a line graph, so by switching to the raw data view, I can see a table which was generated by my query. You can see here that there is a single underscore value. I can then change the visualization to a gauge, which is a much better way to show a single value. Now I can see that average temperature in my house is 20.84 degrees. Next, I'm going to transform the data slightly using a map to add some additional fields to the table, which will then allow me to write the results of this query back into the table as a new metric. In order to write that data back in, I need a value, a measurement, a field, and a time. And so this map command sets the measurement to average underscore house underscore temperature, the time to now and the field as temperature. If I run the query now you can see that some additional fields are added to this table of results. Now I'm going to save this query as a task. This will allow me to run that query on a schedule automatically. The goal here is that the average house temperature metric will keep itself updated automatically. I can use the save as button to export this query to a task. Give the task a name, tell it to run every 10 minutes, and output the results back into the room temperature bucket that we created earlier. This data will live alongside all of the other metrics being sent in by Telegraph just under a different measurement name. Click Save as Task and here's the task and we can see that it hasn't actually run yet so let's kick it off manually now and refresh the page and I can see that it's run and here are the logs. So if we go back to our bucket then we can see the new measurement name has been created and if we look at the data inside that measurement then we've got two readings. You can see that the average temperature is now being calculated and logged each time the task runs. This is the data that I want to be able to access from within Node-RED. So now I need to create another token that Node-RED will use to read that data back in. So back into the tokens tool, here's the Telegraph token that we created before. Let's add a new one in the same way but this time read only. So we go to new token, give it a name, 
give it read access to the room temperature bucket but not write access and click save. The token is available here to copy to the clipboard and we're going to need that again in a moment. Now that we have created a Cloud2 account, we've got data in there, we've processed that data in a task, we've created a read-only access token so we can move on with setting up Node-RED to pull that data in and start making decisions. Let's imagine that we're building a system that will switch the heating on automatically when somebody comes home from being away all day. In order to keep things simple, I'm going to hand wave away all of the machinery that actually does that and replace it with an inject node. This will trigger an event when we push a button instead of detecting that somebody has actually come home. And instead of actually switching on the heating system, I'm going to use a simple debug node which will output to a log rather than switch on the boiler. So we'll lay those out here. This is an inject node and by default it outputs the current time in epoch format when you click on its button and a debug node will output to the logging area on the right hand side. We hook the output of the inject node to the input of the debug node, deploy those changes, switch to the debug pane, click the button and here's the output. To help explain the story a little bit more let's rename the injection node presence detection and the debug node switch heating on. We can also change what is output from the injection node so we'll set a string to reflect what might actually happen in a real system. So the basic system is set up, click a button and an action happens. What we want to do is add some more intelligence to the system by using the data that we've got available in InfluxDB to only switch the heating on if the house is actually cold. In order to talk to InfluxDB we need to install a new node. Up here in the menu you can access the palette and this shows you the nodes that you currently have installed and on this tab you can search the repository for new ones. So we will search for InfluxDB and this one at the top, Node Red Contrib Influx DB, is the one that I've been using. Click Install, you get a message about perhaps needing to restart Node Red. You click Install again, and there we go, new node types. You can see on the list of nodes here, there are three new node types one for pulling data in, one for writing data out, and a batch writer. But today we're just going to focus on the in node. We'll drop it in here, you might notice the little red triangle and that means that we need to set up some configuration for this node before we can actually use it. So double click on the node and you can see that we need to add a new connection to InfluxDB. Click on the edit button and we've got some boxes to fill out. If we open up the browser to Cloud2 then we can copy some of the information over into the config and that will help us get it set up more easily. The name is up to you, you can have multiple InfluxDB connections inside Node-RED so give it a name that helps you differentiate it from another one. This one I'm going to call InfluxDB C2 EU Central as that's the cloud region that I set the account up in. It's version 2. The URL we can copy from the browser. The token is the read-only token we've just created. We can paste it in here and click done. Now that the database connection is configured, we can drop this node into our flow and finish setting up our query. This is made a lot easier if we can see the C2 account at the same time. Double click on the node again and we can see that the server section is filled out with the connection information. Now we need to give this node a name, get average temperature and we need the organization information and we can copy that over from the browser here. And now we're ready to write our flux query. From the bucket we created earlier, room temperature, we set a time range to limit the data that's being queried. One hour is probably too much but it's fine for now. We want to query the new measurement name that we created in our task. I can't remember quite what that was so let's open up the task and check. Now we add another filter to select just the field that we care about and I can see from the task that that field was called temperature. 
We just want the most recent result, so we will limit to last. This query should now return the data that we want, so let's drop it into the flow and give it a test run. And here's our response. It's a JSON object which we can drill into in the debug pane. It's an array with one entry, we can open that up, and here's the response to our flux query, and in the underscore value field is our average temperature. Now we know where the data is inside the response object, we can refine the debug node to print just that average temperature. We want the first element in the array, which is an object, and the key is underscore value, and that's got our number in it. So let's deploy that and try again, and there we go, just the number. Now we know how to access the actual result of our query, we can use that in another node to help make decisions. Now let's get a switch node in our flow. A switch node is a bit like an if statement. You can move down a particular flow depending on the result of a simple test. We're going to test the value of our average temperature query, now we know how to get that number from the previous step. And now we can say that if the value is less than a number, let's say 18 degrees C, that's about 65 Fahrenheit, then take path 1, or if it's greater than or equal to 18, then take path 2. Let's take our original debug node, which we're pretending is controlling the heating, and hook it up to output 1. That is to say that if the temperature is less than 18 degrees, then switch the heating on. And we'll create a new debug node here so that we can check that it is taking the other path. And we'll just print out, it's not cold. We'll hook those up and click deploy. A quick recap then, we use a switch node to test the value that's coming back from our flux query, and if the value is less than a particular number, then take one flow, and if it's greater than, then take the other flow. Let's give this a test. Click the button, and here's the output. If we hover over the node ID, we can see that the it's not cold node is highlighted. This means that the value must have been greater than or equal to 18 and digging into the object here we can see that indeed it was. 20 is greater than 18. So just to prove that it works, let's change the threshold a bit. Let's say that the temperature needs to be greater than 25 degrees to be considered warm. Save and deploy, click the button, and here's the result. And the highlighted node is the switch the heating on node. So there we go. We've looked at how you can create a Cloud2 account, create tokens to allow you to write and read data independently of each other, and then configure Node-RED to be able to query that data and make decisions on it. I hope you found it useful.